Hello everyone, welcome to the Study Hacks Institute of GIS and Remote Sensing. Today I will try to discuss a very important topic, mainly how we can easily calculating Standardized Precipitation Index or SPI. So basically SPI is widely used for monitoring and analyzing meteorological drought. Using this SPI we can easily monitor the meteorological drought condition for any specific region. So in this case, I try to explain all of things step by step. So I hope you can easily get the idea how we can easily create the SPI map for any specific boundary and what types of data we need to use to create this type of map. And in this case, I try to use here Google Earth Engine. So I will try to explain all of details. So I hope you can easily create the SPI standard specification index mapping and further you also try to classify it. how do you find out the extremely dry very dry moderately dry near normal dry or moderately wet very wet and extremely wet so this type of classification further you also did after creating the spi map so i will try to explain all of details one by one so when you work with the standard size precipitation index first of all you need to work with precipitation data so for the precipitation data, we can use here the different types of satellite imagery. So if you check this PDF, I already uploaded this statistical approach in my LinkedIn page. If you don't check it, simply check it. And then you can easily get this uh, idea how we can easily work with for SPI and calculating the standardized precipitation index and then monitoring the meteorological drought. So first of all, we need to choose our data set. So basically in this case, we work for that SPI. So when you work with the SPI, uh, first of all, we need to import the precipitation data set. So in this case, if you want to use, you, you need to use the long term precipitation data. Okay. So if you want, you can also use here the ground station data to get the precipitation. But sometime ground station data is not available. So for that, we can easily use different types of satellite imagery. So as here you can see here I mentioned some satellite imagery. So one kind is the chart satellite imagery. So from the chart satellite imagery, we can easily get that precipitation from 1981 to the present time. Okay, so it's one kind of data set. As well as we also use here the ECMWF reanalysis data. So it's offered the daily reanalysis precipitation data with high spatial and temporal resolution. We also use. Another is the GPM, mainly Global Precipitation Measurement. So this type of satellite data set we can easily access in the Google Earth Engine data catalog. And further we can easily create the SPI. And further creating the SPI, then we create this type of range. Suppose if you say if the SPI value greater than equal to, then it, it's indicating about the extremely wet condition. If the SPI value 1.5 to 1.99, it's very wet. Then 1.2 to 1.49, it's the moderately wet. And further, 0. negative 0. 0.99 to 0. 0.99, it's the near normal. Then negative 1 to negative 1.49, it's the moderately dry. Then negative 1.5 to negative 1.99, severely dry. And less than equal negative to extremely dry so further after creating the spi map using the different types of satellite imagery basically it provides you the precipitation data further we try to make this classification and then create the classify map of spi suppose it's one kind of map here i already created so in this time we easily find out that extremely dry, very dry, then moderately dry, near normal dry, moderately wet, very wet and extremely wet. And uh, SPI we can calculate it in the different time scale. Suppose SPI 3, SPI 1, SPI 3, SPI 6, SPI 12. So different types of SPI we are also used for different types of monitoring for weather condition. So basically in this case, we are using that SPI 12. So SPI 12, it's very useful to identify for meteorological drought, okay? But SPI 3 or SPI 1 for the short term, we also use it for agricultural drought condition or others. So I will try to explain all of details. So I hope we can easily get the idea 
how we can easily work with SPI. So first of all, we need the data. So in this case, in my code, I try to use here precipitation. Mainly, I try to import the chart satellite imagery. So this is chart satellite imagery, and this data set provide you the daily precipitation data. Okay, just I simply import this image collection, and then I simply put this time period. So I take all of precipitation data and further filter bounds with my study area and then select the specific band of precipitation basically this image collection this band provide the information in precipitation millimeter per day okay so just i simply create this image collection okay so this is the first step we need to import the precipitation data so in this case just i use the chart satellite data and then i filtered the this precipitation data so now we calculate the monthly precipitation total suppose for this month uh, 1981 to 2023 all of month i want to create the monthly precipitation total mainly total sum so for that we simply create a function so in this function we just filter this image monthly and yearly okay and further from this monthly precipitation and this connecting with our image collection okay so basically it is stored all of images but further i create a function this function help me to get the result in monthly only for the monthly image for a specific year suppose 1981 all of month 1982 all of month and up to 2023 all of month we create so now we just group monthly precipitation into 12 time period because in this case i create for spi 12 so for that you can see here i simply uh, put the group monthly precipitation in 12 month period so just i put here my specific time period and then i filter it and then i calculate the total precipitation okay and it's stored in this here and after doing these things we just call here we just put here to compute the mean and standard de de deviation for yearly precipitation okay so for that we simply call the yearly precipitation all of images and create the mean basically average and also calculate the standard precipitation and further we try to apply this formula basically this formula is that precipitation minus average precipitation of this year and also divided by standard deviation of this year so just we simply put in here these things and calculate the spi and further if you print that we can easily get that you can check the result spi collection so now all of images we find out that one band is the spi and spi class okay so just it create the spi further we also create the spi class so spi class we simply put here you can see this type of friends so this same range we also apply in here so you can see this is the range about that for different types suppose if the greater than 2 it is the extremely wet condition or wet region we find out 1.5 to 1.9 and so this same range we also apply in our code and further we try to make the classification and then we can easily get this type of uh, mapping okay so in this case if you check it for the africa region we find out that uh, extremely dry so this type of place is the extremely dry you find out in here then very dry then moderate dry then near normal this type of place and moderately wet and very wet and extremely wet this type of place we find out in here so using this process it is very helpful to monitoring the meteorological drought for using the spi 12 okay further if you want you can also use for the spi 3 suppose just you calculate the total precipitation for the january february march then april may june just take the three inter three month interval and then create the spi3 or when you work for the spi6 then take the month for a uh, six month interval and then you also create it as well as we also try to make this type of annual spi values time series chart so you can easily get it uh, in the console tab you can see we already created so here you can see we find out that average value for 1981 for the whole africa region we find out that spi value at 0.26 and as you can see it's indicating about that hard condition of the drought okay so we find out that you can see 1.4 1 0.1 okay so it is a normal not drought also you can see so using this result you also get the sum data 
so from this data we can easily identify what is the pattern of the standard precipitation index so this is the process we can also calculate it spi 12 and further spi 3 just simply short is your time period suppose just take the three month total and also work with that okay so i hope you also get this some knowledge from this tutorial if you have any question you can simply comment and in the meantime i also give you an announcement for upcoming online training program on google Earth engine so basically this new best class will be start from 17 january and now registration is open and in this online training program you will learn all of details from beginners to advanced level if you have no knowledge about the coding such as python javascript don't worry about that you will learn all of details from beginners to advanced level and after completing this online training program you are able to do any types of remote sensing analysis very quickly and efficiently using the google earth engine so this from this website you can easily check all of details for our upcoming online training program so for the first day's course content second day's course content third day's course content fourth fifth and sixth and seventh this course content you can easily get it from here so basically our total for four hours each day we provide and three hours mainly live lecture or live training class and one hours for the problem solving class okay so problem solving class basically when you face any problem re, uh, during this training session you can simply share your own screen and show the problem and also get the solution so one hours for the problem solving and three hours for the live training program and it's the total seven days mainly 28 hours program but in this online training program if you enroll then you also get the some benefit so one kind of benefit is very important for beginners it's a lifetime teaching support because as a beginner when you start the journey with google earth engine then you face lot of problem so that's why you need the continuous support so after completing the total seven days online training program if you face any problem regarding any issue regarding this course content okay then you can easily get this lifetime teaching support okay regarding this online training program any problem or any confusion or any doubt you can take the private lifetime teaching support okay so this is the uh, unique way for our online training program as well as you can get that all of recorded class as well as all of practice code and also get the materials and every class we also give some assignment regarding this topic so after completing all of assignment then you also get the e-certificate from us and this training will be start from 17 january and now if you want to join this online training program you also get some benefit because we provide the first 10 will get the 50 percent discount on this online training program so don't waste your time if you want to join simply contact in this whatsapp number as well as you can also contact with this email then book your seat so today is no more thank you for watching that stay happy stay safe